Hi guys, welcome back to Golden Reviewer. So here I have four of the best mobile SOCs in 2022. Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, Exynos 2200, Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, and uh, Google Tensor G2. So today we are going to do a stress test for these four SOCs under 25 degrees room temperature and we'll see how well they can perform under sustained load. That is also a test for the heat dissipation for the devices. So again, here is the detailed information for each of these devices. You can see the device model as well as the SOC for each of them. Okay. Before the test, I do have a feeling, a prediction that the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen is going to perform much better than the rest. But uh, still, let's do the actual test to see. Okay, so the first test will be CPU stress test. I set them all to the same parameters and uh, the test will last 20 minutes. Let's start it right now. And uh, maybe we'll fast forward a little bit along the way because uh, we won't be able to sit here to watch it for 20 minutes, right? Okay, so the first interesting observation comes at around 3 minutes. You see that the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is still outputting almost the full computation power while the other three have already throttled. Okay, let's fast forward. Okay, so 10 minutes and we see that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, Exynos and Tensor G2 all fluctuating a lot and the performance has dropped to maybe 70 to 80% of the full performance. However, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 powered Mi 12T Pro is still almost at its full performance. Okay, now let's go straight to the 20 minutes mark where the test will finish. It's actually very interesting to see that the 8 Gen 1, Exynos and Tensor G2 actually performs very, very similarly if you look at the average performance. So during this 20 minutes, all of them was able to output on average 260 to 270 GIPS. And then the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is about 40% faster than all of them. And uh, let's measure the temperature after the test. Here we see that the two Samsung devices are at almost the same temperature, while the Xiaomi is hotter, and the Pixel is surprisingly very cool, right? It's the coolest of them all. So that's a very interesting result. We see that the Xiaomi, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 performs much, much better, but it also comes at a cost, right? The temperature is hotter. The Pixel, on the other hand, performs similar to Exynos 2200 and Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but it is much, much cooler. So that's something you might want to pay attention to. Okay, so we've done our CPU stress test. Now let's move on to GPU. So this test will use the 3D Mark wildlife extreme stress test this will also last for 20 minutes and it will put a very heavy load to the gpu on these devices okay let's fast forward a little bit okay now we are about 11 minutes into the test i want you to pay attention to the fps you should be able to notice that the snapdragon 8 plus gen 1 is actually outputting almost twice the performance of other three devices on average, it's giving out about 16 to 18 FPS, while the rest is like around 8. Then boom, this happens. You see, the device overheats, and there is a warning that pops up, and it stops the benchmark. Well, actually, it doesn't force you to stop the benchmark. It's just a 3D mark thing that uh, if any pop-up comes out, the test will be interrupted. So if you are actually gaming, I suppose you can still game. But this overheat is really an issue that I want to highlight. So you see, this is the case, right? There is no doubt that Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is much more efficient than any of the other Android SOCs out there. And there is no doubt that Xiaomi is trying very hard to make the device run fast, right? And allow the SOC to unleash its full potential. And if you watch my previous Genshin Impact test, you saw that it performs really, really well in the gaming test. But then here is the problem, right? I think they are overdoing it. They should at least still implement a gradual throttling pattern and not just let the device run at 100% power and then maybe after 10, 20 minutes, give this overheat warning. I don't think it's a good strategy. Actually, we've saw this 
on previous Xiaomi devices as well. Even with the infamous Snapdragon 888 or 8 Gen 1, right? Those were inefficient SOCs. They produce a lot of heat, but Xiaomi still allowed them to run at almost 100% speed. And then after a while, the device will overheat and uh, interrupt whatever you are doing. So I really don't like this. So if you are going to buy this device, you have to keep this in mind, right? This might, might happen to you. So the bottom line is the device will give you very fast processing speed, will give you, give you smooth gameplay, high benchmark points, but you might need to pay attention to the cooling. Maybe you need to add some extra cooling to the device to keep it healthy, maybe to stop it from blowing up. Uh, Anyway, let's continue the test to see the result from the other 3D. Okay, here is the result, and it's actually surprisingly similar as well, just like the CPU test. Here we see that although the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is much faster than Exynos and Tensor, but after 20 minutes, it also throttles the hardest, and the eventual performance is almost the same across the three devices at about 1.2 to 1.3k points. As for Xiaomi, it's really a shame that it couldn't finish the test, right? Because I believe that even if Xiaomi did a little bit of throttling to allow the device to finish the stress test, it will score much, much higher than any of the other three. But they didn't do it, and uh, that's their problem. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I hope you find the video insightful or helpful for your buying decisions. And uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.